Okay guys, I've covered this topic on how to line and pull one pass lines previously on the channel, but there still seems to be that one really frustrating issue that quite a few of you guys seem to be still facing. And that's when you pull a line, you wipe off, there's extremely little or no ink at all in the skin, and it just bleeds, you lose the stencil and also the will to live. Well guys, I've had a long and hard think about this and I'm super excited to bring you this video today because it's got some brand new updated information which I believe has never been covered before which is going to hopefully fix all your lining issues once and for all, reduce those stress levels and give you the tools to confidently pull one pass lines. everyone welcome to this video so the last video I put out on how to pull one pass lines I went really in depth on the actual elements needed to achieve how to pull the actual lines in the skin now I'm not going to recycle all that information in this video guys and just make a repeat video so if you haven't seen that video already I strongly recommend that you watch that video first familiarize yourself with all the information and then come back and watch this one the video can be easily found on my channel if you search my video Videos, and it's called how to tattoo lines dramatically improve your tattoo technique plus live skin demonstration but to make it even easier for you guys I'll put a card up on the screen if you click that it'll take you directly to that video and I'll also put the link in this video's description box so assuming that you've watched that video guys let's now crack on with this updated one so coming up in this video firstly we're gonna do a super quick recap of all the elements needed to achieve some nice strong lines in the skin. Then we're gonna be comparing the mistakes that a novice or an apprentice tattooist makes against the techniques that an actual pro tattooist uses. Then we're gonna actually delve into a subject which I think has never been covered before and that's the actual mental approach that an apprentice takes when trying to pull a line as opposed to the mental approach that a pro tattooist takes when pulling a line. Now, I know this might sound a little bit weird and wonderful and out there, but I've gave this a lot of thought and I genuinely think this is a vital element which is really gonna help you guys out. And finally guys, we're gonna be putting everything that we've learned in this video today into a live skin demonstration. Firstly, deliberately making all the mistakes that the novice or apprentice makes on the skin and then we're gonna be switching it around, implementing everything that we've learned and showing you how the pros do it, how to pull those nice one pass lines to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to pull some confident lines on the skin as always guys to get the most out of this video i can't recommend enough that you don't skip any parts of it put about 15 to 20 minutes aside watch it in its entirety to get the most out of it because the way my videos work is they build on information and if you do skip a part the part that you're watching might not make much sense because you've not watched the previous section with all that said guys let's not waste any more time and get straight into it so super quick recap, firstly guys, as with anything in life, if you want to achieve a certain result, then you have to combine all the specific elements to achieve that desired result of whatever task you're trying to pull off. Think of tattooing like ingredients to bake a cake. All the ingredients need to be present to pull off a good job. You wouldn't bake a cake and only pick and choose a couple of random ingredients because that would result in an epic fail. You have to combine all the ingredients needed to complete that task. This is something I see all too often with novice artists and apprentices. It's like they'll only combine a few elements and totally disregard everything else. And then they can't understand why their tattoos don't transcend to the skin and nothing really works for them. Make a note of these elements guys which are all covered in depth in the previous video I've just mentioned because even if one of these are missing from the outset you're already swimming against the tide and will probably struggle to ever achieve quality lines. It's also worth noting one of the main elements I see novices and apprentices leave out and tend to think it's not very important is the quality of equipment. Trust me guys this is one of the main elements that's going to make you struggle to get even close to any decent looking line work if you don't use quality equipment. There's a huge misconception that a tattoo needle is just a needle. They're all sharp, they're just puncturing the skin 
and they all do the same job as the next needle. This however couldn't be further from the truth. I know premium needles and cartridges obviously cost a little bit more money but if you've never used a premium needle or cartridge I strongly recommend that you at the very least treat yourself and invest in at least one box just so you can actually experience the difference between what a professional needle performs like as opposed to a budget unbranded one. There's plenty of options. My personal favourite premium cartridges are MV Gen 2 cartridges by Tatsol and recently the new Cheyenne capillary cartridges. Both of these brands are of exceptional quality. Further to this, it's imperative you only use quality ink. I've done extensive research on the health risks of cloned and unbranded ink, which you can watch in my other videos on my channel. But again, if you invest in a premium quality ink from a reputable manufacturer, such as Dynamic Black, then you're already on your way to being able to pull some nice solid lines. So assuming we've got all the ingredients together to pull nice lines, why is it that the novice still can't pull a solid straight line? Well one of the biggest mistakes I see apprentices making when attempting to line is usually poor technique. Stripping back everything into its most basic form, the main goal for a line to be solid in the skin is for the ink to actually be placed in the dermis layer which is a second layer of skin. Apprentices seem to be very reluctant to actually hit this depth and tend to back the needle off slightly. This, with the added nerves of actually running a tattoo machine in a client's skin, can result in some very undesired effects. The problem occurs when the surface of the skin visually looks like it's accepting the ink, but this is usually superficial surface ink smudging the stencil. Almost like drawing on top of the stencil with excess ink from the tip of the cartridge. When the reality is, the needle simply isn't penetrating the skin at the correct depth. Added to this, I see lots of apprentices neglecting the stretch of the skin. If the skin isn't stretched correctly, then instead of the needle puncturing the skin, it usually pushes it away and almost bounces off of it. Which again, results in no ink being delivered to the dermis layer. So on the surface of the skin, again, it looks like you've pulled a nice line, but as soon as you wipe away the excess ink, you realise nothing has been tattooed and where the needle has been bouncing around, it's most likely scratched and grazed the skin making it red, patchy and bleed slightly. The excess ink will also be responsible for dissolving your stencil and quickly making it disappear which will make the whole situation go from bad to worse. It is vital that you have all the ingredients or elements together to pull a line but it's also imperative that they're actually used correctly and none of them neglected. If all the elements are aligned and used correctly there's no reason you shouldn't be able to pull a nice solid line. So now let's compare what happens when a pro tattooist uses the exact same tool set of elements and ingredients as the novice in this example but is actually able to pull a nice strong line. What's the difference? Why has the pro tattooist been able to achieve this but the novice or apprentice has failed even though they're using the exact same tools and information? Well it's actually a really simple answer. The pro tattooist will have a well-oiled fundamental method of always using the elements in order and never deviating from the technique. It might sound overly simplified, but the fact remains that's really the only difference between an apprentice and a pro tattooist in terms of applying method. When the apprentice starts to neglect little parts of the technique required to pull a line, these little parts quickly snowball into huge problems. The pro tattooist will calmly stick to the roadmap, meticulously maintaining a balance of all elements needed to pull the line. This is probably why many tattooists, including myself, look quite miserable when they're tattooing because their whole focus and mindset goes into autopilot, concentrating on the balance of techniques. Again, the actual techniques are covered much more in depth in the previous video I mentioned, but here's a few things that are going on whilst the pro tattooist is pulling a line. A consistent needle depth, stretch, needle angle, correct amount of loaded ink into the tip of the needle hand speed actually matching your machine speed also further to this a consistent speed of the machine moving across the skin Finally guys, before we get into the live demonstration, I want to cover something I've thought long and hard about and I don't believe anyone has ever really approached. And this is the mindset a pro tattooist will approach a tattoo compared to the mindset of an apprentice or a novice. And I think this subject is super interesting as well as extremely important. Whether you're pulling lines, shading, colour packing, you name it, there's a certain mindset that a pro tattooist adopts and it's widely based around confidence. 
When a pro tattooist takes on a job, they've probably already mapped out in their mind exactly what needle configurations they're going to need, what machines they're going to use, inks, techniques, and ironed out any potential pitfalls with the design placement on the body before they've even laid the stencil. When a pro artist performs a tattoo, there has to be a level of confidence to know that when the needle is placed in the skin at point A, they're going to confidently pull that line in a uniform fashion at an even depth and a steady consistent speed until they reach point B, where the machine will leave the skin leaving behind a strong line. This confidence is only really enforced by lots and lots of practice. It can't be instilled overnight, but with determination, dedication and lots and lots lots of practice, confidence levels do eventually begin to rise and this shines through with any pro artist's work. When an apprentice who may feel completely out of their depth attempts to pull a line, confidence is most likely to be the last emotion they're feeling. I'll let you into a little insight into my mindset at the beginning of my career and all I felt when I tattooed human skin was sheer panic, dread and constant second guessing whilst I was actually on the skin with the machine. It's these feelings of anxiety it that will make you forget every single element you're supposed to be holding together in the first place to pull a line. For me, I had a solid foundation of knowledge of what needed to be done to achieve pulling a line, but as soon as the panic set in, I'd literally forget everything temporarily. This can result in you going rogue and completely making up your own rules like saying, okay, I know I'm supposed to be moving straight to point B, but my machine just left the skin a bit, so I'll just go back over that area like I'm using a standard Sharpie on a piece of paper and try draw that little bit in that I've just missed. Then when I've done that, I'll try to insert the needle again at a random point to complete the line. And then I'd be like, oh, I forgot to stretch. So I'll go up and down the line a few more times, stretching the skin. And before you know it, you're a sweating, panicking mess and probably thankful that the line didn't actually tattoo into the skin in the first place. Through fear, it would turn out absolutely horrendous. Again, the only way confidence is going to increase is with lots and lots of practice. You can improve your confidence much quicker by only tattooing fake skin and guys never practice on human skin. Okay guys, so we're about to get into the juicy stuff with the live skin demonstration, but before that, give me 30 seconds for the awesome super thanks section. Welcome to the super thanks section of the channel. And this is basically a new feature rolled out by YouTube. And it's kind of like tipping your waiter or your waitress when a video's really resonated with you and helped you out you can go into the like section and leave a super thanks now it goes without saying guys i'm super appreciated to anyone that leaves a super thanks and to show my appreciation back to you guys as subscribers for everyone that does leave a super thanks on the previous videos the next video upload just like this section now i give you all a personal shout out on screen mention just to say thank you all you're so awesome and i really really appreciate it it doesn't matter which video that you leave the super thanks on because i always get the notification and your name will definitely be mentioned on the following upload So this is how the live demonstration is going to work, guys. We've got an identical setup for an apprentice and also for the pro tattooist. Now, the reason for this is so we can't say the apprentice failed because it didn't have the right equipment or the professional equipment. And this is why both setups are going to use the exact same equipment. So for the machine, we've got the Bishop Power Wand. We can't say we're using a budget machine for the apprentice because this setup, the Bishop Power Wand, is actually one of the best machines available on the market today at this moment. Added to this we've got a Tatsol Envy Gen 2 9 round liner. If you can see the figures on there it says 1009RL. If you watch the channel you should know that means it's a 10 gauge 9 round liner which basically means it's a double zero nine round liner which means the needles are a little bit thinner and finally guys we've got our ink which is good old dynamic black i don't use anything but dynamic black to be fair because 
it just works and it works really well. On a side note guys, if you notice how tidy and organized all this setup is, this goes back to the mentality and the confidence thing that we've just been speaking about. And I personally think having a nice tidy workstation before you set up, keeping everything in order, just really helps with the mindset. You don't want mess everywhere. You don't want junk everywhere. Keep everything in order. If I do a tattoo and I've got different size needles, I tend to have them all smallest to biggest aligned. And again with ink, I start with the black and then I go through the grey washers, darkest to lightest, then go to my whites. Okay guys, so first of all, we're going to stick the stencil on like we would any ordinary stencil. Going to spray the skin down with some alcohol and that just cleans it all up, sterilizes it and takes that surface grease off so we can get a nice transfer. Use our stencil solution. I use Electrum Gold. I use that pretty much for every tattoo I do. And again, guys, this isn't going to be a tattoo time lapse. We're literally going to do two lines for the demonstration. I've got time lapse videos on the channel if you want to see actual tattoo time lapses. But again, this is just for the purpose of this video to help you guys out, show you what you're doing wrong when you're trying to pull a line and you wipe off and all you're getting is scratchy blood, no ink in the skin. And then we're going to compare it against the amateur one against the pro one using the exact same equipment. So now let's load up the needle. So you remember what I talked about in the video when I first started tattooing and I had all the knowledge, but as soon as I started going onto the skin, I started panicking and then everything just fell apart. The wheels came off everything because I just couldn't compute all the elements that I needed to have put together to manage to pull a nice solid line. So I'm going to do my best to talk you through that and relive that and show you exactly what's going on when your mind gets clouded and then all the elements start to fall apart. And again, it just comes down to that confidence thing. So like I've just said, I'm pretty sure I've loaded up way too much ink in this. So this is the first mistake that I've made potentially before I even get to the skin. Well, let's see how we pan out. So here I go, the apprentice going on the skin to pull a line. Nervous as hell. I'm sticking my barrier cream on there on this bottom line. I'm just resting my hand on there. So already I'm forgetting to stretch, which is a really common problem that apprentices forget to do. Start the machine and here we go. So straight away, you can see I've got way too much ink loaded there. So already I'm in panic stations. I'm like, why has my ink gone all over my stencil? A professional, if this had happened, you'd stay nice and calm and you just dab it. An apprentice will probably do something like this and wipe it and go, okay, um, I've lost some of my stencil now, which isn't a great problem for something as simple as this but obviously if you've got something a bit curly a bit swirly a bit more detailed then we've got problems straight away so now our stress levels are starting to rise because you can see on the stencil it looks wonky already we've got some blood coming out of that we're going to carry on we've been told we need to pull this line we need to maintain a nice depth an even depth a consistent line straight across so we try again now i'm going to talk you through what's probably going on in your mind when you're pulling these and why your tattoo isn't turning out. You notice my right hand here, it's just resting. It's not stretching. Also, my left hand isn't stretching either. It should be doing this, but I forgot because I'm panicking. So we'll go into the skin. I'm not confident about if I'm at the right depth and the machine is starting to bounce on the skin. You can see it there bouncing away. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm moving along the skin now. I'm having some sort of progress. But then I'm thinking, why am I not having a consistent speed? Why is the machine bouncing up and down? Am I at the right depth? And then I think, okay, I'm sure the machine came out the skin there. So instead of just carrying on with the plan, everything's gone out of my mind now. I'm panicking. So I revert to going back to a method almost like pen and paper and which you really shouldn't do, but I'm panicking. So I think, okay, I'll just come back here and I'll try and sketch this bit in on this line. Um, 
and we'll see how we get on. I'm like, okay, that looks okay. I think I've got a line going there. So I'll just carry on again. I'll try and join it up where I was. And then I carry on again. You can see the machine's bouncing around. I'm definitely not the right depth there. Do I go deeper? Do I go back over it again? And then in my apprentice, amateur mind, novice mind, I'm thinking, well, this looks a little bit dark here and I sketched that back and forward. So maybe I'll do that here as well. The angle's all wrong, what I'm using the machine at. And now I'm just a sweating mess. I pretty much lost everything. So I'm thinking it's looking a little bit weak. It's looking a little bit choppy, but there is a line there. So I'm gonna apply some more ink to get rid of the weakness. And then I'm seeing there thinking, okay, I'm just gonna join the line up from there and carry on as we were. Again, the angle's all wrong, but here we go. I'm nearly at the end of this. Thank God I'm at the end of this line. This is what I would be thinking anyway. Um, just want it over with, just want to get to the end of it. Um, probably the client staring intently at me, thinking what the hell's this guy doing? And then I think, okay, I've pulled a line, I'm good. So then I get my wipe, some green soap on there, give it a wipe and then start to come to the realization that there's not really any ink in there at all. The line, you can't even class it as a line. It's red, it's scratchy. And if you did that on someone, to say they're not gonna be happy is an understatement. If you did a full tattoo with lines, if you wanna call it lines, but if you did a full tattoo with that, then um, your reputation is going to be in tatters before you even become a fully fledged tattooist. You can see it's getting redder by the minute now. There's no ink in there. There's a the few little scratchy bits where we've tried to join the line again. There's no consistency there. And that's pretty much what happens when all the elements fall apart and you lose your mental roadmap. So now we're going to fix all these things. We're going to approach this with confidence. We're going to remember every element. We're going to piece them all together, just like we talked about at the beginning. We're going to hold it together. We're going to be confident. We're going to go in at A. We're going to finish at B and we're going to pull a nice, confident line. And remember, guys, nothing has changed. The setup is exactly the same. It's the same machine. It's the same needle brand, even though I'm changing the needle out to a brand new one. It's the same ink and all the same variables. The only difference is all the elements are going to be working in line with each other and we're going to have the confidence to go from A to B. Okay guys, so this is now how the pro tattooist approaches it. Again, confidence, we're going to put barrier cream on the stencil, keep the skin nice and clean. We're going to load our needle up. Get a nice stretch. Pulling away with this left hand, stretching with the right hand. And we're going to go in at point A. Nice even depth, nice and confident. Got that stretch going. Get to B and lift out. So again, just like the first one, I'm gonna give that a bit of a wipe with green soap. And if you noticed as well, how long the first one took, as opposed to how long the second one took. The second one, there was no messing. It was in at A, finish at B and out. And this is another reason why you just naturally speed up with experience with tattooing. When you do first tattoos, they tend to take hours and hours to do the smallest tattoo and this is why it's because you're overthinking everything but when you've got the confidence just to pull from a to b stuff starts to speed up dramatically so let's wipe this off now and you can see there guys we've got a nice solid bold line nice and straight and again exactly the same setup same variables the apprentice mindset the pro tattooist mindset holding all those elements together thank you so much for watching this video guys and it really does mean the world to me if you've taken anything from this video at all take a second out right now 
smash that like button let me know that you've liked it because every like on the channel really does help the channel grow and in return it helps me create more content for you guys as subscribers feel free to drop a comment in the box below let me know what you think about this video thank you once again for all the super thanks don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've already subscribed it's really important to check that notification bell with all that said guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one